Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some much more complex problems with kinematics. So these usually have a couple of parts or several objects that we have to deal with. So, uh, first one that we're going to take a look at, I'll have a series of them so you can keep watching. Hopefully they'll get at least marginally more complex as we go. So I've got a few of them. Uh, an elevator starts from rest with an acceleration of 1.8 meters per second squared. It accelerates for 1.5 seconds to get to its top speed. It travels upward at that constant speed until it slows down, approaching the destination floor, wherever it's trying to go, coming to a stop at the appropriate floor. While slowing down, the elevator has an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. If the elevator is used, to, is used to go from the first floor up to the sixth floor, a total height increase of 18 meters, how long will the elevator ride last? Okay, so if I'm gonna draw this out, I've got a building. Yay, building. And we've got, let's see, an elevator inside that's going to go up from the first floor up to the sixth floor way up here. And we've been told that the height increase that it's going to go through is 18 meters, about six floors up. Okay, so it accelerates at the bottom uh, at one, what did I say, 1.8 meters per second squared, and it accelerates for 1.5 seconds to get up to its top speed. Then it will continue going at that top speed, a constant speed, for a little while, and then as it gets close to the top, the floor that it's going to, it will begin slowing down, and when it slows down, it has an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. So basically what we've got is, we've got three different sections that we're going to break this into. Why do we have to do that? Because the kinematic equations that we use only apply if the acceleration is constant. And we don't have a constant acceleration throughout the entire problem. So this is what makes it complex. We're going to have to split it up into parts that we can solve. So I'm going to mark one of them. We're going to call it part A. Here. It goes from point 0 up to point 1, and this is when the elevator is speeding up. Up to its top speed. Then we have a section where it goes at the top speed from 1 to 2, and that's at a constant speed, so our acceleration here is going to be equal to zero meters per second squared. And we said that our acceleration here in the speeding up was uh, 1.8, I believe, 1.8 meters per second squared. And then finally, as it gets close to the end, it begins slowing down until it gets to our final destination. I'm going to call that point three. Uh, so this could be A, the green section, B could be red, and C could be blue to kind of think about it as different sections here. But in each of these, our acceleration is a constant value. This one is 1.5 meters per second squared. At least that's the magnitude of it. Okay, so for me to solve, what I really want is the total time it takes to go up that 18 meters. I guess I should actually drag this down a little bit, but the total height that we're going up is gonna be a height of 18 meters. Since I'm going from the top of this, I should probably have it where it goes up to here, where the top of the elevator will be. So I apologize if my drawing's a little confusing here. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to break this into chunks that we can solve with our kinematic equations. Okay, so let's start with A, because one of our big problems on this is I never tell you what the top speed of the elevator is, so we're probably gonna have to find out stuff on our way. So we're gonna start off looking at section A. We're gonna apply our kinematic stuff. We've got delta x for section A. We've got uh, the final, the initial, acceleration for A, and time for A. So here's what we've got. I didn't mark these with A because I'm going to call this zero. That's how fast we're going at the beginning of section A. And V1, how fast we're going at the end of section A. But we do have a specific acceleration during this period of 1.8 meters per second squared. And that acceleration is upward. Okay? Um, we're also going to have a displacement upward, but we're probably going to need to find out more information on that. We do know this, that our initial velocity, because it starts from stop, from rest, is 0 meters per second. And we're told that it takes 1.5 seconds to get fully up to speed. Now, because we're going to need a lot of information going into the next part, we need to know what its final speed is, which is going to be how fast it's going at V1. So we will want this. We're also going to need to know how high up it goes so that we can square that away with what we've got from the rest of that. So this is a case where we're actually going to need all of our information. That's okay, let's take this one at a time. 
First off, let's find our displacement, delta x. So what we're not immediately looking for, even though we'll want it later, is our final velocity. So we're going to use the equation that does not have final velocity. In the chart here, we go to final velocity, we go down to where there's an empty spot, and we will use the very common kinematic equation, delta x equals initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Now for this, because we're in section A, this would be A, 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 and A. Okay, I can fill these things in. I don't know what delta x is, but that's okay, so that's what we're going to solve for. Delta x A equals zero meters per second times our time of 1.5 seconds plus one half. My acceleration is 1.8 meters per second squared times t squared, which is 1.5 seconds quantity squared. I'm going to grab my calculator here. Uh, let's see, this 0 times 1.5 seconds is just 0, so it disappears into a puff of nothingness. And we have delta x a equals 0 meters per second times seconds, that's meters, so it's 0 meters, even though I'm just not going to write it because it's 0. And we've got 1 half, let's see, I need 1.5 seconds quantity squared, ah, hit the wrong thing, 1.5 quantity squared, 2.25 seconds squared. The unit gets squared as well. So I, then I'll multiply that by 1.8 meters per second squared. And our second squared divided by here is going to cancel out with the second squared that we get there, leaving us with just meters. Okay, and then I'm also going to divide that by 2. So if I've done this correctly, we've got the following. That we've gone up about 2.025 meters We'll call that about 2.03 meters to three significant figures. Great. So that's one thing that we were looking for. All right. The other thing that we're going to need, so we've now gone up 2.03 meters in section A. We've now got that info. Now the other thing we're going to need is our final velocity after it's done speeding up. My board's acting a little weird. Stop it with that. Ah, where did my thing go? Okay, I don't know where the mouse went there, but that's okay. Let's keep moving. So this time, we can actually use just about any equation so long as it has final velocity. But in case I messed up on my displacement, let's go to the equation that doesn't have displacement. That's the very first one. And it says our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus our acceleration times our time. This is going to be acceleration here in A and time here in A. So we'll find that our final velocity is equal to zero meters per second plus our acceleration 1.8 meters per second squared times our time 1.5 seconds. Great. So I'm going to do 1.5 times 1.8. This second will cancel out with one of the seconds and we're left with meters per second, the correct units. Our final speed at the end of this is 2.7 meters per second. And it's accelerated upward, so it's going to go upward. Great. 2.7 meters per second. Great. So we do know that we have gone 2.03 meters in the first 1.5 seconds. Now, here's one of the things that we're going to find. During the section B, the red section, we're going to have the following. Delta xb. We're going to go some distance during that time. We're also going to have a final velocity of 2.7 meters per second. Oops, that should be 2. And an initial velocity of 2.7 meters per second. I'm going to fill in some more on this in just a moment, but our acceleration at this point is 0 meters per second squared, and our time for this to happen, we don't actually know. We don't have a lot of information about what happens in part section B. I will say this. We know that it doesn't speed up or slow down in the red section because it goes at a constant speed. So I've got acceleration of zero. At the end of A, it sped up to 2.7 meters per second, and it continues going at that until it gets to the end of B when it starts C, which is when it begins to slow down. So that's how I was able to fill in that it's 2.7 meters per second for both the initial and final velocities, where V1 is the speed right here as we go from A into B, and V2 is where we go from B into C. Now here's one of the downsides. While we have three pieces of information, you can try and solve for something, but you won't actually get anything. I talk about this a bit in class, but you'll divide by zero, which is undefined, 
what this is saying is we're asking it, okay, it starts off going at 2.7 meters per second. It ends at 2.7 meters per second. It never speeds up and slows down. How far does it go? Well, we haven't given it anything that actually limits that. All we've said is it keeps moving like this and never stops. And we ask how far it goes. Well, it can't give us an answer because we haven't defined the problem given it limits, a definition. When you define something, that's like defining a cat from a dog. You give enough information that you can tell one from the other. This information, while useful, does not tell us about what we're actually looking at, at least not completely. It tells us what happens during this period, but because we don't know how far it goes in this period or how long it takes, we don't have anything that gives us limits on that. And that's why this one's extra complex. We're going to have to jump from B into section C. So let's take a look at section C. We do know that in section C, we're going to go some displacement delta XC. We have a final velocity V3 of zero meters per second. Let's look at what's happening in section C. Section C is where we slow down from 2.7 meters per second. So we sped up, got to our maximum speed of 2.7 meters per second. And then right here, we're going 2.7 meters per second, and we begin slowing down to come to a stop. We end that by coming to a stop, and therefore my final velocity for this section is going to be zero meters per second. My initial velocity in this section is the maximum speed, because this is when I'm slowing down. And our acceleration in part C was, I think I said 1.5 meters per second squared. Uh, has an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. Now, in this case, we're slowing down. What we end up with is we have to slow down, we have to have an acceleration the opposite direction of our velocity. And we're currently going up, so our acceleration must go down in this case, so we need a negative. And finally, we have the time for C, but we don't know how long that takes. We've got different sets of information, but we do know that at the beginning of section C, slowing down, it goes from top speed down to stop, and this is our acceleration. So we're going to have to fill in some info on this. All right, let's start by finding how much time this takes, because that's one of the things we're after. So we want the equation that does not have delta x in it. Well, that's uh, v final, which in this case is v3, equals our initial velocity, v2, plus ac times tc. Great, I'll fill these in. We know that it ends at zero meters per second. It begins this section at 2.7 meters per second, plus an acceleration of negative 1.5 meters per second squared times TC. Now the negative is useful because then I can add this over to the other side. I'm gonna let you do some of the algebra yourself so we can keep this moving. 1.5 meters per second squared times TC is equal to 2.7 meters per second. What happened to the negative? Well, this is subtracted, so I added it over to the other side. To find TC, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.5 meters per second squared. So I take 2.7 divided by 1.5, and I get that the time this takes is 1.8 seconds. Now, I also know that I get seconds because I end up with meter per second divided by meter per second squared. The meters cancel out, one of the seconds cancel out, and we end up with seconds in the denominator of the denominator, so it flips up to the numerator. You might check some of my other videos or work out the units yourself to make certain that that works, but we put SI in, so we should get SI out. We know that section C takes 1.8 seconds to actually take place. Now we can go back and we can also find how far it goes, which is not originally part of the question, but we will need, and I'll show you why. So um, I could use any of the equations for the most part, but in case we made a mistake with our time, let's go with our kinematic equation that does not have time in it. And as a reminder, if you are in an AP physics class, as of the, shoot, the filming of this video, the equation I'm about to write on the board is not provided on the AP equation sheet. So it's one that you might want to be familiar with. It is V final, in this case V3 squared, equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. In this case, we're looking in the section C. Great. I've got that this is zero meters per second, quantity squared, my final velocity. My initial velocity is 2.7 meters per second, quantity squared, plus 2 times negative 1.5 meters per second squared, times delta XC. 
I'm going to leave this to you all to actually go through and do the algebra. 2.7 squared, let's see, I would add that over to the other side, so I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 1.5, and we end up with that here, delta xc, if I've done this correctly, is 2.43 meters. And you'll see why that's important in just a moment. So now that I've got that, I'm going to write that in here so I don't lose it, 2.43 meters. Now we can go to what's happening in the middle. All right, I'm gonna draw this out again so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. I've got a bunch of information. I'm not gonna put everything in there, but we had the green area where we were speeding up and we know that we covered a displacement of 2.03 meters there. Then we've got the red area here that we are currently looking at, which is B. Then we have the slowing down period up here, which we know we go 2.43 meters. And why is that important? It's because this total displacement is, uh, sorry, 18 meters, six uh, floors, 18 meters. That is what I said originally, right? Double check your info. Yep, 18 meters. Great. So here's the thing. We don't know how long it takes. If we did, we'd already be done. So that means we need another piece of information. We need to know how far we have to go. Well, if this total is 18, and we go 2.43 here and 2.03 here, that means that section B must have 13.54 meters, a little over 13 and a half meters. That's why we needed those displacements because of the information we've got. But now that we've got that, we know that the displacement that it has to go is 13.54 meters, so that when it goes two meters speeding up and two and a half meters slowing down, this part in the middle will actually finish up the 18 meters that we need to get us where we're going. Now that we've got something limiting in here, we can go through and we just need to make certain we have an equation with delta x and our time. Our acceleration is zero, so why don't we go with the most common kinematic equation, delta x b, our displacement in b, is equal to our initial velocity for b, which I think was v1, I think I said, tb, plus one half a b t b squared. Now why this is nice is I can plug in here that this is zero meters per second squared and that means this whole term actually disappears. We don't have any effect from acceleration because it doesn't speed up or slow down during that section and if you'll notice that means that our equation simplifies down to distance equals rate times time but that only applies when your acceleration is zero. So trust these kinematic equations because they'll get you the answer as long as you're doing it appropriately. Okay, delta xb we said was 13.54 meters equals our initial and final speed in this whole section was 2.7 meters per second times tb, the time that we need for the middle part of our journey. Okay, well I can solve for tb, so I take 13.54 divided by 2.7 and we end up with the time for the middle portion is about 5.01 seconds, give or take a little bit of rounding error. Okay, so we've got now 5.01. We're pretty much done. I asked you what the time it takes for the entire trip. We got 5.01 here, 5.01, plus the time it takes for speeding up, that was 1.5 seconds, 5.01 plus 1.5, and then plus slowing down, which was 1.8. We find that our total time is 8.31 seconds. There we go.